Tech News Weekly is sponsored by Hover.com. Go to gfu.hover.com and get 10% off your entire purchase. FreshBooks. FreshBooks is an easy-to-use online invoicing service that saves you time, gets you paid faster, and makes you look professional. Get started completely for free at FreshBooks.com. And by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook by going to audiblepodcast.com slash gfq. Starting Tech News Weekly in 3, 2, 1... Welcome, everybody, to Tech News Weekly. This is a show where we cover everything that happened in technology uh, throughout the week. I'm Adrian Zarian. I'm joined by Suncast, as I am each and every week. How are you doing, Suncast? I'm doing all right. I shouldn't say that. You weren't here last week. No, I wasn't. I was uh, I was out having fun. You were? You, well, did you miss two weeks, or like you missed one week, and then you missed the I following think, week? Yeah, I think, I think it was the other week. Yeah. Last week, and, and not the week before that, but the week before that. I want to mind everybody. Sense whatsoever. I want to mind everybody. You could go to our website, <laughs> guysfromqueens.com. Also go to our streaming site, gfqlive.tv. You can watch us live at gfqlive.tv. We have a great, great chat with 26 people inside uh, talking about pretty much whatever we're discussing. You could also listen to us on the go on the Stitcher app at stitcher.com. I had a great demo planned for everybody. Um, <laughs> but unfortunately, we started the show 28 minutes late. Uh, we had a major Skype issue. Uh, as you know, uh, we use VidBlaster here at the network, and Suncast recently, uh, I, I got VidBlaster for his machine at, at his studio, and we uh, gave him a nice computer rig with a higher speed CPU and all the good stuff. And, and it doesn't work. And now we just tried it out, <laughs> and it's not working. It's freezing constantly. It's doing the same thing. It, many of you know that, that watch on a regular basis. Many of you know that we... I think like eight months ago, we started encountering this problem when we're sending and receiving video via two machines that both have VidBlaster on them. It's an anomaly. I have no idea what's going on. It's every one of my machines here at the studio and uh, I guess whoever else is on the network. The only person I've gotten it to work with is Brian Brushwood from uh, NSFW, from the Twit Network. Yeah, what gives? The only person that, I, uh, that I've... <laughs> gotten it to work with i have no idea i i honestly i have no idea what to do beyond this point no clue and we had a whole thing planned i was going to actually demo i i got the iphone 4s here uh jessica i ordered jessica an iphone 4s and it, it she arrived. started to run off with it and she had to go run <laughs> off with it but and i don't blame her she, she waited 26 minutes for me to get my act together and uh, I discovered this this hysterical thing in the Siri app, in the Siri function. Uh, and I, I guess I guess you know what you could chop up the the one that I had done earlier, right? When I did the little demo, I could. You could do that. So pretty much, if I was asking you some ridiculous things, and if you curse at it, it won't it won't repeat the curse. Uh, it, it'll say you know please don't be mean to me. And but I I asked for I said. I would like a prostitute. Find me a prostitute. <laughs> and you know what it said? Here are 18 local escort services you may be interested in. And then I said, I want to buy some drugs. And it said, here's a rehab you could go to. Fascinating. I found it actually really <laughs> funny that <laughs> drugs are bad, but paying for sex is perfectly fine in the eyes of Siri. Allegedly. Well, so, I thought it would have given you, um, like, pharmacies when you asked for drugs. I did, too. I thought it would, like, give me pharmacy, but nope, told me to go to a rehab. <laughs> addiction <laughs> clinic. That, that's, that's what it said. It said uh, addiction clinic. So, um, I guess since we're having Skype problems, let's go with the first story. The acquisition uh, between Skype and Microsoft has officially been approved. So, um, yeah, it took, took well, about five months, I think. It took about five months, which is kind of normal for a large acquisition like this. Uh, Skype thought, is now. I thought it was pretty quick for a large acquisition. Yeah, like yeah. That. Uh, not bad. Now I'm hoping they get their act together and they fix a lot of the problems. 
I'm trying Such to find as, what, what problems do you see with Skype oh, that let's you would see. want fixed? Let's see. Uh, more support. I think the fact that they only support H.264 or Skype certified cameras for widescreen and HD is, is an issue. The inconsistencies. Uh, one example is on my MacBook, I could get widescreen working on occasion. Uh, but if I'm if I'm doing widescreen, if I'm doing if I'm doing a call with my MacBook to another MacBook, a, a, to another Mac, it goes into HD. If I do it to you, which are you're on a Windows machine, it will not go to HD. Mm-hmm. That that's a total inconsistency that that I don't understand why it's even there. Uh, a couple of things here and there that 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 are bizarre with Skype, and uh, I, I've always said I really wish they would offer a a go to meeting type pay service and I, and I and I and I have predicted that Microsoft will implement this and start competing with the teleconference companies like go to meeting and and Cisco and uh, all these other companies that are doing this I think they dropped the ball on that big time do, do if you? you remember I I know you were talking to um Rob Greenlee earlier this week on what the tech yeah. and I think you mentioned uh net meeting at one point and yeah. it's like well the, Microsoft had net meeting at one point which was a great product at the time. At the time, yeah. But then they never kept up with the changes and didn't do anything with it. They just let it die out and well, didn't they, do anything well, with it. Well they NetMeeting. went into live. They went they to Micro- they went to Microsoft Live and they started using that service. But I don't I don't think that, that Skype is by far the most superior uh, amongst all of them in my opinion. I know Uvu does a, f- a phenomenal job, but to me you're still not getting the audio quality that you get with Skype. But I would love to right. see Skype say, okay, listen, you know what? For corporate support, for teleconference support, uh, and Microsoft does have the means to do this, and I think they, they definitely do want to get into this market. Why not offer a higher end, you know, an HD version where you pay a monthly fee, you get better service, you get more, uh, you uh, get, more of a pro tier, uh, yeah, you, more of a pro tier, guaranteed a certain level of service and quality. And listen, I'll pay fifty bucks a month for that. Sure. I will because you know why? I know the product. I think a lot of people would. I know that it has ver- very little latency. I know the fact that the audio quality is is you know phenomenal. Uh, we are looking for different solutions here at the network, but we are having a difficult time finding something that we could implement uh, amongst everybody on the network. You know, you need one. Spencer needs one. Whoever else is doing a remote job, Paul yeah. would need one. Yeah. And I Our really viewers know that too. We were just checking out a um, another product that uh, a viewer by the name of Joe Demax uh, found for us. But it doesn't necessarily seem like it's as good as Skype. What was so the product? Far. So, um, Goober or something like that. Yeah, I haven't I haven't heard about it. So the viewers I know tried they it, help. But I that. couldn't get it to work in HD. So yeah, uh, there's different options we could do, and and I think the Skype deal is a good direction. And I think the Microsoft of today. I know when people think of Microsoft, they think of the Microsoft of the '90s. They think this Square type company. But the Microsoft of today is is not that company anymore, and it's a very different company. And I think they are innovative when it comes to these things. So who knows what we'll see? Uh, another thing that I got an email, uh, a couple of viewers knew that we would probably talk about this because we are big fans of Skype. Um, they 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 said that one thing they are really hoping for, and they believe they will see, is Xbox Live integration with Skype. Because the current mm. system that they're using for their, uh, I guess, their talking feature is it's working on this weird thing where I can't talk when you're talking. I could only speak when you're done. So it's only half duplex. Then. I guess so. I guess that's what it is. I, I'm not too sure. I'm not too familiar with it. So a lot of them were complaining about that and they were saying how this will be a great way to integrate Skype and video calling and gaming into one, uh, which is great. I think it's great. Yeah. And you got to also. The number look one at the phone thing that I want to see. Is, is HD support for these Microsoft Live cams? Listen, I think very easy. Are, very hmm? easy how to fix this. Add a switch. HD HQ. That's it. Yeah. Let yeah, us decide. Because uh, the, these live cams, I think, are superior to pretty much any Skype certified camera in yeah. terms of overall quality. Well, now yeah, you can't do HD on Skype with them. But I think now we're going to start seeing that. I, I think the first build that Microsoft has a hand in, which I assume will be. Probably not the next one, but the one following it. The next big release. I guess 6.0 will be the next big release because we're at 5.5. I think we'll start seeing mm-hmm. Microsoft's hand playing a major role in this release. If if Microsoft cameras and Microsoft, uh, I guess, headsets are not you know the supported device, you know there's something bizarre going on. 
I think that that'll be the major thing. Um, mm-hmm. Another thing is I think they should integrate Skype in their live messenger service. I don't think they, they there is a need to support I would agree it with anymore. That. Listen, but do you gonna... think they could screw it up at the same time? Do you? Because th- a lot of people that I've uh, heard talk about this, they're very skeptical and worried that Microsoft is is going to come in with a heavy hand, start making changes, and and just screw it all up. I think one thing that we will see, uh, which Tony Bates, the CEO of Skype, which is now uh, president of the new Skype division of Microsoft, so he's keeping his position. Uh, one thing we will see from him, and he said this, is that he wants to have ads in the Skype calls. Ugh. So if I'm on a call with you That's via horrible. Skype, it's going to have like a 20 second, I think it's every hour, it'll be like a 20 second commercial. But I mean, we, I would obviously opt out to this. I wouldn't agree to this. I would definitely say, uh, I, I'll I think pay that you. would hurt their customer base big time if they did that. Do you think so? I mean, a lot of people don't care. A lot of people, if they're on a two hour conversation, they could sit for 20 seconds. Now, when you're in the middle of the call, I think yeah. if it's like right before they could deal with it, but yeah, before and after, I, I think insert it into the call. That's really annoying because what if you're starting to, what if you're doing something like what we're doing and you're trying to do that at, at on a budget, you couldn't, you would never be able to do something like that. What if you're trying to use it for an occasional interview? Yeah, no, I think you're right. I think, but who knows? We'll see what happens. I want to move on to another story because we're trying to do some rapid fire stories here uh, today. A lot of uh, the viewers have been submitting emails and I encourage you to send an email at guysfromqueens at gmail.com. Uh, we love hearing from you, uh, your complaints, your suggestions. And they said they want more stories. They don't want a couple stories. So we'll keep it moving. Uh, you want to go into the Hulu story, which this was interesting because last week. Reports, well, this is your baby. So, yeah, this is my thing. So about two <laughs> weeks ago, um, uh, Information came out that Hulu is for sale. and Wasn't the, it more like just a, a rumor for well, the most part that it was, it was a rumor. up it, for sale? It They've was been a kind rumor. of rumored for a while that mm, should we sell them, should we not sell? Well, they had been wanting to sell for a while, and I was fearing that Fox or, or one of the big names were going to grab control of this and totally destroy it. Um, it seems like the bidders were Google, Yahoo... No, I'm sorry. It was Google, uh, Dish Network. I believe Amazon also was in the running. Uh, mm-hmm. Yahoo was in the running. And uh, early reports were saying how uh, one of the major networks were in the running. Out of those three, out of those, I guess, yeah, out of those four, Yahoo, Google, Amazon, Dish, who would you have thought would have bought this? And also Microsoft. Amazon. I read Microsoft also. Well, I would want Amazon, but... Realistically, Honestly, I couldn't tell you because yeah. I have mixed feelings about Hulu because I have a very hard time understanding why people like Hulu because I don't find any use for their their website and service. A whatsoever. lot of people hate it. I'll tell you what. A lot of people hate Hulu. Personally, there I have Hulu Plus, so I, I don't really deal with the Hulu website. I, I, I use it on either my Xbox or my Roku. And it's See, a much that's a completely different, different experience. Totally different experience. I was just about to say that it's a it's a it's a totally different experience when you're using it on a device compared to using it on the website. The website is is flooded with clips, and I don't know yeah. who the people are that are, that want to see a clip of Grey's Anatomy for two minutes. You know, I, I just don't, I don't understand that, that. That's one of the reasons I don't like Hulu is because go there, I want to watch a full show, and then you know I'll, I'll give you a good example of what I don't like. One of my favorite shows, Red Eye, which is on Fox News at like 3 a.m. that I love but don't always get to see or I miss parts of. Uh, they do post it to, to, to Hulu, but it's two weeks later. Are you really going to remember or give a crap about that particular episode that you missed two weeks down the road? Not a chance. I can never remember. All right, well, two weeks from today, I got to go watch the episode that I missed. Yeah. Never going to happen. I've tried it. It just doesn't work. And that, to me, is one of the examples. The other thing is uh, a lot of times when I go in, I do want to watch something that is on there. Uh, there's so many ads, and it's so slow, and just it's a horrible user experience, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, so they wanted to sell, but now the CEO, uh, Hulu's owners, are coming out and saying, well, no, we're not selling it after all, uh, which is... I don't I, I don't know why they want to sell. I guess the, you know it, it's a very difficult thing to do business with. You got to have these different content partnership deals with 
everybody. Everybody. Yeah. But I think one thing that's missing from Hulu, uh, and, and I believe uh, Netflix as well, is internet streaming. I th- and, and in the sense, when I say internet streaming, I, let, me, let me rephrase that. Uh, internet broadcasting networks, internet networks, like Revision 3 and, and a bunch of others. I think they need to incorporate these to kind of change the way that people perceive it. It's not just network deals it's you could also have you know original content which they were trying for a while i don't know if they're still doing the original content on there you have to integrate both in my opinion you do need original web series uh, i would agree with that web creators on there and you also Although, need I mean, the network you you can take a look at youtube and seeing the success that they've had in in terms yeah. of original content yeah and, and just overall whatever goes yeah, but original content in the sense of I would like to see on there is like a revision three. You know, put a revision three on there. Put and I'm just using them as an example. They, I don't, I don't think they are on there. But um, you know what I found? You know what I saw to go a little off topic? There's a channel called U2 on okay. uh, on FiOS cable, and I don't know if any other, what other markets have it. And what U2 is is web TV shows on TV. And majority of it is uh, revision three shows, hmm. which I, I was I was actually very surprised to see uh, on TV that there was a network, and it was bizarre. It was just a bizarre thing, and you know what? It didn't really translate well to me. It didn't really translate well. I gotta find. Do, do you see it? You two are. It's like Y O O T U U or the opposite. I have never heard of it. Uh, TV network. Let me see this. Where's this on? Y O U T O O dot com. It's a strange. It, it has, it has the X Files and it has like Revision Three, and has Batman. Mm. It's a very strange channel, very very strange channel. Batman. Yeah, I, I and the Green Hornet. Like I couldn't figure it out. It was it was weird. <laughs> and then it says like record, be on TV, watch, be seen on TV, and share. It's some weird thing they're doing. I don't know. I gotta look more into it. It might be it might be something interesting. Uh, you want to go into a story? Uh, yeah. Let me pick one out here. Uh, let's touch on this whole BlackBerry thing because that's been a pretty hot topic. Yeah, this that's week. that's it your is stuff. The, uh, three day BlackBerry outage, mm-hmm. which gets a lot of people, including myself, and I, and I know a lot of people are already turned off the BlackBerry, but there's still some diehard users out there as well. But uh, what happened is earlier this week, I believe on the 10th or the 11th, uh, people in Europe, Africa, and the Middle East and Asia started experiencing complete service outages and delays. Mm-hmm. And RIM really dropped the ball on this again. They've had service outages before, you know, once or twice a year, it seems like now. Yeah. They'll, they'll have some sort of major uh, uh, BlackBerry data data outage and this time around it took them three days to figure out this problem which is completely uncalled for and yeah. they did they do recognize that but they they almost add insult to injury with this uh video apology from uh rimco ceo mike lazaridis he's just like oh yeah we dropped the ball uh our customers expect better of us and uh, we'll try and do better next time we don't really know when uh a full service will be restored and one out, and it's just like, well, this is your bread and butter. This is your business. You should have known better. I guess what ended up happening is uh, they had a core switch failure, and it didn't switch to the backup. Ah, uh, that so that's what it was. But it took them three days to fix that. Come on. Well, let me ask you: Did you see the apology video, which was bizarre to begin on its own? Yeah, it was a little awkward. I mean, you know, he was clearly reading from a script. He was, but I, I guess it was to show, you know, I don't know. It was just a weird. Um, well, he's, I, I think part of the problem is that it didn't really come across as sincere. Yeah. I was just like, oh, well, I'm going to make a statement and hopefully people buy it and feel better that, that somebody that high up is going to recognize that there's a problem and say that, that we're going to do better next time. But part of the problem is that people are saying, well, we wanted to know when we could expect full service to be restored and, you know, guarantees that this isn't going to happen again because by definition, BlackBerry users are hardcore users that want to do email 
and, and that sort of thing. Did you have did you have issues? And, hmm? Did you have issues? I didn't experience any issues. Uh, I did hear that some people in the United States experienced uh, delays. They didn't have like a total service outage, but there were delays here in the United States. Uh huh. I'm trying to see so here who else had are, an issue. Question now is is this a final straw for BlackBerry? Is this you know just another nail in the coffin? For Unfortunately them? for BlackBerry, it, it, it comes on the. On the on the hours before the iPhone is released, you know, yeah, very days untimely. before the iPhone is released, it's very untimely, and it's not a good sign for them because some people might say, "Oh, you know, hell with this! I don't want to deal with BlackBerry anymore. I'm just going to go for the better phone." I think uh, I think the average consumer would probably do that. I don't think anybody who's using their phone in a business environment is going to do yeah. that because a You're tied they're in. already locked into it, and usually. Those are through their business and their business pays for all of that stuff. So they're very unlikely to change or have any sort of change in their service because of this. Yeah, so they're kind of locked in. I think that it has very uh, it, some big implications to to their user base. People are going to be like, well, this isn't working out. Maybe we need to look at some other options. Sure. I don't know. You know, they the BBM, do you use your BBM? I don't know anybody on BBM. Okay, uh, <laughs> I you know I, I know I a think lot BBM of people. Is great though. I know a lot of people that are that are really into BBM, mm -hmm. and they um, they really rely on BBM, and that's what's keeping them in is because all their friends are on BBM. It's a very small thing, but that. I mean, yeah. that, to many people, that's but, a important aspect of the phone is BBM. Well, not not to get too ahead of ourselves here, but. BBM is very similar to iMessage, but that's just the thing is you have to have your friends all in that environment for it to actually be of any use. And I don't have any friends on BBM, so to me it doesn't make any difference. I, I do think both BBM and iMessage are great services in the sense that if you have friends on there, you don't have to text them all the time. But then again, a lot of these people nowadays that do texting, especially with an iPhone, already have unlimited messaging. So I'm experiencing a uh, an issue with iMessage. Uh, to jump to that, uh, iMessage okay. is the BBM competitor, and they're saying, "Well, this is going to really start competing with with iPhone, no. with with BlackBerry." No, no, that that's what I, they're I saying. For me, um, the issue is that I have multiple devices here uh, that 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 use iOS, and the phone that I gave Jessica, Jessica's phone, is using the same account. Same Apple ID. Same, same Apple ID. Now, you can use the same Apple ID with different email addresses. Right. But whatever email I use, it says it's active. Because I set up FaceTime with three or four different email addresses. And it's thinking my FaceTime email address ad addresses are linked to an Apple ID. Hmm. I had the yeah, same. This whole thing confuses me a little bit because I'm not familiar with that environment. And they've done. I, and I think what they should have done was incorporate FaceTime with iMessage. Yeah, that definitely should have been integrated. I think. I think that's missing big time. I think the integration with it. So, do you want to go to? You want to go to the iOS stuff today? Uh, let's just go to that iOS. iOS. Um, iOS. iOS five was released uh, early Along this week. Along with the uh, iPhone 4s today. And the iPhone 4s was today, and I got iOS on on pretty much all my devices. I have a touch here, and uh, I have to tell you, it's really good. It's a f it's a fast OS, uh, very similar to the previous one. The notifications are a huge, huge plus. I tried that today when I looked looked at the 4s in the store. It's cool. I like it. Yeah, the notifications. There are, are some really people that say that it's it's very Android like. It is. Uh, I think in it's some ways yes, but I, I in some ways I think it looks a hell of a lot better than Android. It does look a hell of a lot better, but I, I guess maybe because I'm used to Android, but I do feel that Android does uh, a better job with the notifications. It's not as in your face as the Apple one is. Okay. I think the Apple one is a little bit in your face, uh, but it might be because I'm getting a ton of alerts on this. So that might be the reason why, but uh, the notifications is a cool feature. iMessage is another one, um, and a, and a whole 
you know, list of other ones. We've gone the through card multiple application. times. Yay! You know, people are loving this card application. Actually, <laughs> people are really liking the card application. I don't want to. Uh, I, I don't want to concentrate on iOS too much because we we've really uh, done it a thousand times already. But the the phone came out today, and yes. uh, people are waiting in line. Apparently, it sold out everywhere. Right. Oh my goodness! Like, uh, what was that one stat? I'm, two million, two million phones that. in pre the pre-orders were two million. Yeah, iPhone 4S pre-orders top one million in a single day, which beats the single day pre-order record set by its pre predecessor, the iPhone 4. That to yeah. me is an amazing statistic, absolutely amazing, and, and it's really funny because if you you take that into account with the opinions that we were getting. After the the uh, big Apple event that announced the iPhone 4S, people were like, "That's it. We're very disappointed in this." Yet here it is, topping the previous generation in pre-orders. Yeah. What does that tell you? Uh, it's very interesting. I think the analysts don't but know people anything. People being disappointed by it. Why are they going out and buying it? Then? Because because they they they'll buy anything. <laughs> um. So what what the interesting thing is Bloomberg is reporting that Apple it might be selling uh as many as 4 million units this weekend. That is crazy. I mean, isn't that isn't that insanity? 4 million units over the weekend that they're expecting to sell uh which is uh, out of, I mean it's crazy. When we're talking about those numbers, we're looking at let's say the, the Kindle which sold 250,000 pre-orders, the Kindle Fire which is Amazon's uh, tablet, they were praising the fact that they sold 250,000 pre-orders for this device, which they're, they're about the same price. Uh, mm -hmm. But the iPhone is, has sold, you know... Uh, but you also already have well, no. an established user base for you do. the iPhone. You do. So uh, it's sold out everywhere. You're looking at about a two-week wait. That's crazy. Let me ask you, because you've played with um, iOS 5 on yeah. both an iPod Touch 4th generation yeah. and an iPhone 4S. Yeah. Um, how much better is the 4S, do you think? Much better. The speed is... is for, for, yeah. Well, much well not just... Do you think there's a noticeable difference other than just speed with iOS 5 on the iPhone versus the 4th generation iPod Touch? Uh, noticeable difference. Yeah, you know what? One thing I did notice, and, and I'm wondering if it's a flaw in mine, but... Twi the Twitter integration that they were praising for this device mm -hmm. in iOS 5, I b from what I saw, it's only in um, the Twitter integration is only on iPhones. Huh. I could be wrong because I had a different pop-up come out for my username. It was an Apple screen that came up for my Twitter username, and it wasn't the Twitter application. Which I found bizarre. There are little things like that that, that I find uh, interesting. I could be totally wrong. And again, I, I could have overlooked something. I could have missed it. I'm going to try to reinstall it again after the show. But it did seem like I had a totally different screen for my for the Twitter install. Do you think that the iPhone 4S is a disappointment like people thought? right after the event i don't think it's a disappointment at all i think the thing I, i'm comparing it to even compared to the, to uh an iphone 4 which i uh, my mother-in-law has and she stopped by a couple hours like about an hour ago and i was comparing mm -hmm. the two and it's a lot it's a lot faster i mean the phone is really fast now if you have an iphone 4 is it worth going out and getting an iphone 4s no it's not but the Siri just, app, just because of, just because it it doesn't have as many changes, or it doesn't have that, as many changes. When you're considering speed and your uh, cosmetics, uh, it's not a difference. I mean, cosmetically, it's the same exact look. But when you talk about that, it comes in white now. Comes in well, no, the previous one had white also. The iPod Touch now comes. No, in No, not white. until recently. Not until recently, yeah. Um, but if you, if you like the Siri portion is really cool i think siri uh, you know at first i was thinking like who's going to use siri and is it like a novelty and i used it all day and i found it to be really cool like the fact that i don't need to type like if i'm sending a text message i could just say the text and i know android could do that too but yeah. this does a much better job with the speech recognition much we were better having job. a pretty good discussion off the air earlier today about um iphone versus android and, and i don't know that many people actually know but you know coming from 
you know, a BlackBerry back in the day, uh, I wasn't always a big Apple and iPhone supporter. But I think I've kind of turned the tide here where, uh, especially today after looking at the iPhone for us, uh, I do think that the iPhone is a great device. Yeah. I really do. So do you feel differently considering, you know, going from, let's say, a um, a 3GS? I mean, you did play with the 3GS and you did play with the 4. Mm -hmm. Uh, what, what makes you like this one now? Uh, I think it's just improved. It, it's, okay. it's taken out some of the bugs, some of the eggs here and there, and it, it's just added features. Okay. By the way, do you um, remember, I, I take it back about Twitter because Twitter, I guess had to update its app and okay. now it's integrated. It's asking me for, uh, to integrate it in iOS. Yeah. I'm not sure that you'll see uh, such a big improvement from the iPhone 4 to, to the 4S, but definitely if you have a 3GS, you're definitely going to see a big noticeable difference there. And, and um, I, I've said this before, my parents just got Androids about two, three months ago. And I mean, I can clearly see differences between the operating systems clearly now. Yeah. And, and it's just almost not in day between the yeah. difference between the two of them. And in some ways, the iPhone is better than the other than android but in other ways android is better than the iphone but i think especially now looking at the 4s iphone is is the winner overall overall winner and by far see and, and the margins aren't th i mean i haven't compared it to the galaxy s2 that everybody's praising and i'm sure it's a phenomenal phone but this is my this is my one gripe with i mean i have multiple gripes but the, the big one that i have with ios is the fact that with android i feel that it's not the everyday person's OS. And for someone no, like me, that's an enthusiast. You're given a lot of options uh -huh. straight out of the box, like with settings. So I could always hit settings, and there's always some sort of setting to tinker with. And there's different uh, different settings to set up. With iOS, it's it's really hidden. You got Yeah, you, you kind of need a cross between the two, I think. Yeah. Uh, in, in a sense where iPhone is great because it just works out of the box. You don't really have to go about... Figure out how do I do such and such. You, you just it's right there in front of you, and it's very intuitive. It's, it's it works how you th would expect it to work. Unlike Android, I think it takes a little. All right, well, how do I do this, and how do I get it to do that? And, and yeah. it's just not exactly clear unless you spend time googling and figuring things out and setting it up. In that regards, I think iPhone is great. Now, another thing that I've noticed is that one issue that I had with the last version, I think it was four point. 3.2 or 4.23, again, I don't remember. Uh, the, the previous version of and, uh, iOS was the fact that on my iPod Touch and on my, um, on my iPad 2, a lot of applications started crashing. And it, it's something that I never really experienced with the iPhone or, or with the iPod Touch. And I was really hoping that some of these bugs would get fixed. I noticed that still some applications crash. And I really wonder if it's the operating system that that's doing something or it's the programs the applications that are have not been tuned for ios 5 and we're going to find out the next couple look days at the application yeah we're going to start seeing the next couple days because this is a big thing if you and, and if you have an iphone I, I recommend every day you check for updates because by right. the end of the week if you have a lot of apps you're going to have about 30 updates all for ios 5 Right, so and, and keep here's updating. the thing with developing applications is, is yes, they can release uh, developer previews and betas to developers for them to get a, a step ahead with the new operating system so that they can get their applications ready and set up for it. But it doesn't always translate into the real world where once you actually get the device with the, uh, the new operating system, even though you can do an emulator type of deal, yeah. it doesn't always translate and work necessarily in the world, real world with the real device with that new operating system. Yeah. So it's, you know, interesting. Um, I, I'm really curious to see how Sprint does, though. Uh, yeah. That, that's, I really haven't heard much news about Sprint in the iPhone 10. Yeah. The only thing I have here, Sprint says that the iPhone 4S 4 add up is the best device family. iPhone 4S and 4 are the best device uh, family launch ever, hmm. which... Uh, I obviously don't know how to read. Uh, <laughs> it, 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 I, I'm curious because, you know, Sprint has been getting beat up recently and they do have that unlimited data package, which compared to the other ones is really good. 
if you're talking about data. Right. Now, I think the issue lies, and I guess it's all even playing fields now, uh, the issue lies between in your area what is the dominant oper- what is the dominant uh provider for me it's Verizon uh I know AT&T is working pretty decent here Sprint and T-Mobile have no service whatsoever in this area but I know a co- you know a I ain't mile much up anybody here but a mile up it works great so I guess it's depending on your neighborhood and your area here in New York City it's a very funny thing how how it works yeah um, but you know they they all work and they all work great and um, we'll see what happens after this. I really I'm curious to know what happens to to uh, to a lot of the people that were buying Androids because they couldn't get an iOS, they couldn't get an uh, iPhone. I'm gonna see how this affects <laughs> Android sales the next you know quarter or so. Yeah, That's one note I think we should talk about though is um, uh, and 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 you noted this as well is that you can't get Siri on anything other than the 4s. Yeah, I think they're going to add. A lot of people are mad about. Well, they are saying because it it incorporates the the A5 chipset, and that possibly the previous, uh, the previous version, and and I and I really don't believe this to be true, but they're saying that the previous version won't perform as good. In my opinion, I think this is just for you to go and buy another phone. With that said, I do believe they'll they'll uh, they'll put it on the iPad. I think yeah, we'll see that. I on think the on iPad. the iPad you might yeah. be able to see it because it's running the same chipset. Yeah. Listen, they want to sell phones. That that's the the key, right? They Nothing need to wrong create with that. revenue. So we'll see what happens with that. <laughs> Do you want to go into a story? Uh, yeah, we can go into another story. You go into it. Uh, let me pick one here. There was there was one that I wanted to talk about. Um, what about this uh, Microsoft thing with uh, Windows 8 and the Start menu? Because a lot of people had gripes over the the way that the uh, tiled interface, the new Metro interface worked on desktops and so now Microsoft is now coming back and saying oh yeah we're gonna make some changes and, and we hear your 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 feedback and your complaints and we're gonna make changes to try and please you yeah uh, well they did say which I, I think it's a great thing Microsoft is doing uh, one thing was uh, we had discussed earlier in the week uh, you and I was the fact that they uh, people have been experiencing problems with the mouse with their new Metro UI that it's not an easy task to go from side to side. They no, said they have not. fixed th- they have fixed that. So now they're saying what that the applications uh, the way it's tiled is different now. Yeah, it's a little bit different the way they've arranged it. It was in alphabet- alphabetical order, but now you can actually customize that and set mm-hmm. it up in groups in you know whatever order that you want. And then it also will give you more um, icons and applications listed than it did before yeah but to me eh, it's frustrating because that doesn't do any good for me because you've I, had you've had more hands-on that was, with that, this. that doesn't address any of my complaints you've had more hands-on with this what are some of the things that you would like to see uh it, it's tough because i'm a little bit biased here as being a power user i'm very i like things a very certain way and if it's not set up in that certain way uh, it, it becomes very cumbersome and hard to use. And and I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about here. In Windows 7, like Windows 7, and you could do this with Vista, I believe, as well, you, you can simply hit the Start menu, open that up, and it has a thing at the bottom right there that says Search Programs and Files. You can type in a file name. You could type in a program name, anything you want, and it'll pop up in that Start menu area for you right there. I use this to launch applications all the time Mm -hmm. and in the windows metro 8 user interface you don't have this at all and and so now uh it's very difficult for me to find and start applications that i'm looking to start it's very inefficient for me to figure out all right where where do i have to go and how do i find that application and it takes more steps for me to launch an application now because i can't simply just hit the start menu type the program name and hit enter okay that's interesting. I mean, that's uh, just my opinion. I don't know if that if anybody else feels that same way, but if I think the Metro user interface has some sort of capability like that that didn't require you to actually open the search program, mm-hmm. the Windows search program, that would be better because you can use a shortcut to the Windows key S, I believe, and it'll launch the 
search program, but just like that's a whole nother step now that you have to go through where before you just hit one key, type, it pops up, you hit enter. Yeah. I, I'm just curious to know how, I mean, this is the first revision that they're doing, right? This is the first, uh, this is the first time that they're listening to, I guess, uh, the users, but how far along are they going to do this and how, for how long are they going to yeah. do this? Because they, they, there's going to be a certain cutoff where they're going to say, well, this is it. We're just going to do minor tweaks now. Yeah, and I think there's always going to be users out there that until they get an option to completely disable the Metro UI, they're not going to be happy whatsoever. They want the option to disable the Metro user interface. Yeah, I, you know, I, I do think they're going to add that, or they might, which I, I, I fear that they, they're going to end up doing, is doing it for Enterprise. They're going to have like an Enterprise edition where the Metro UI is disabled. Yeah. or You know, and then you could enable it if you want, but I do not think the enterprise uh, market is going to want the Metro UI. And if you cannot disable it, it's going to be a major turnoff for many people. Major yeah. turnoff for many people. It's going to be very interesting to see what Microsoft continues to do with Windows 8 before its release and if it can uh, measure up to what people are wanting from Windows 8. Because well, I think... I think people are somewhat open to the Metro user interface, but they also have to have it in, in a manner that works for them. If it doesn't work for them, if there's challenges that they can't overcome and customize it in the way that they need it to be done, then it's just going to be a miserable failure, I think. Let's talk about the Net Netflix debacle once again. Uh, this week, <laughs> the, the Netflix ridiculousness continues uh early in the summer they announced that they were having a price hike yes where you would be paying uh double the price for if you wanted streaming and dvd rentals opposed to paying you know the the flat fee of 9.99 and getting both uh, yeah, I didn't. I didn't see such a big issue with that as opposed to yeah the second change they made which was spinning off their DVD rental service completely into its own company and its own website. Well, for me, for me, honestly, I was going to save money because it was going to force me down to the seven ninety nine plan and I never use the DVD rentals anyway. So it really wasn't affecting me and I was actually, it was benefiting me because it encouraged me to change my plan. Now, a lot of people were upset over this. Uh, a lot of people were expecting something else. So uh, the CEO sends an email saying, I apologize. This is now back a month and a half ago, apologizing for the fact that they did the price hike. And I honestly thought they would say existing Netflix customers would have their uh, old rate, you know, stable. And you're not going to get a price hike unless you get a new account or you cancel your account. Instead, he says that he's mm -hmm. splitting the companies. We are going to get a new company <laughs> under the Netflix, <laughs> Netflix umbrella called Quickster. And it is only DVD by mail. No streaming. You well, have to have a whole separate login, a whole well, everything separate Everything is separate, totally separate in every, every way. Yeah. Well, turns out that company is dead, and they're not changing anything except for the price hike. So they're back yeah. to where they were. Yeah, I think uh, what it came down to is that people that use both the By the way, servers, obviously, obviously, I just want to say that they're obviously using the same the, the public relations department as and, and company as uh, HP is. <laughs> I don't know what's more confusing, HP's uh, killing off the PC business or uh, or the fact that Netflix has an identity crisis. I don't they know. Make, they make the Veer, don't they? The HP Veer? Is that what it is? The HP Veer? Because when I was at the AT&T store, store today, I, was, I looked at some of the phones and I was looking at the Veer, this yeah, really yeah, tiny yeah. phone. I was just like, this thing just looks like a kid's toy. It's tiny, right? Oh my goodness, is it tiny. Um, so but, uh, th this whole thing with Quixer is, I think part of it is um, the people that use both services don't want to have a whole separate thing that they have to go through. They want it both on the same site, and it becomes uh, pretty much a hassle for them to use both sites simultaneously to do basically the same thing. Do you think, what do you think they're going to do? Do you think Reed needs to go, their CEO needs to go? No. No, look, come on. Because I mean, the, the, the this is this is the guy that brought us Netflix. Do you think I know, this is really a guy that needs to go by now? I I, I think they've 
they've struggled this year in in some ways, but they're still huge, huge. Huge. Uh, yeah, yes, they are huge, and yes, uh, they are. You know, they're still dominant because they they really don't have much competition. I mean, you could go to Blockbuster or or the other ones. Well, and people it's have not tried really much, try, but, tried to compete, and, and, and they can't. Never been able to amount to the same success that Netflix has. I'm looking at the Veer, by the way. This is a tiny little phone. <laughs> I told you, it's just this. It's like a kid's toy. Yeah, I I don't know. You know, it, it is. Wow, it's it's tiny compared to they're, they're comparing it to a Samsung Galaxy. It's it's insanely <laughs> small, or an iPhone. It's I didn't like not even phones that small anymore. Yeah, I, I think the problem is that there's a major identity crisis with that company, and I don't think they understand what they need to do to keep their customers happy. If you're having a price hike, I think you should stick with the price hike, and not really backtrack and jump around. I think you need to stick to your guns, and when you're sending out, yeah. It's really not confident. You're not showing confidence in your company. I, I, they they had that the big issue when they did the price hike, but then they just really exacerbated the problems with the company and, and the hate against Netflix when they did decide and announce that they were gonna you know separate the DVD by mail service to its own company, and you'll have to have an your own login for that thing now. And that was just like. It didn't make any sense. I think that was a horrible move. Uh, Google, next week, uh, rumors are New York Times are reporting that they're going to be launching an MP3 store uh, that's directly that's going to be linked to the Google Music Beta, which we have now, which Google Music Beta allows you to uh, put your songs on the cloud and have it available uh, on you know on any if you're you're on your Android device or on your computer, and you could easily link up to it. It's in beta right now, so not everybody has it. I have I have it on my phone. And it's a pretty good service because I have over ten thousand songs. They're all on the cloud. And if I need if I need them, I have access to them on my Android phone. Uh, they're mm-hmm. saying that they're gonna unveil a music store. Uh, for the time being, and I think this is a great thing. Uh, they have been using Amazon for a while now as their music store. If you if you have an Android device. But now doesn't Amazon kind of compete with Google kind of, Music? Kind of. They're kind of competing now. So we'll see what happens with this. They are kind of competing. Uh, Google does have the ability to make these deals. Uh, and I think if we have another competitor in the market, it's even it's better. I don't know why. Yeah. I think you're already in the environment, right? I think this is something that's been missing from Google for a while. I think this is yeah. what makes the, the, the iPhone trick so dominant. Here is that they still have to negotiate with the record comp- companies, and we all know how difficult that is. And, and the fact that Google kind of failed the last time around uh, negotiating for uh, content with record labels, and and they didn't get anywhere. And they ultimately decided, all right, well, we're going to start doing our stuff without their approval anyway. And I think Google home. totally Google totally has dropped the ball when it comes to media on these devices. Yeah. When it comes to playable media like video and audio, uh, even podcasts, you know, they have Google Listen, which is their podcast service, and it's absolutely awful. There's no way to submit it. There's no way to do anything, <laughs> and, and you have to submit your own RSS, and if enough people submit it into the application, you'll get in their listing. It's a bizarre way of doing things. Uh, I think that all this needs to be integrated in some sort of music, media, video service on the Google devices, much like how iPhone, you know, has has iTunes, and it's a huge sure. plus for it. I mean, you want an all in one device, and a lot of people well, do not use this as an MP3 player. But here's the thing: is that your first time out, you don't always get it right. Sometimes you it takes you a few tries before yeah, you actually get it right. A good example of this is is Ford, Ford, Ford Motor Company, the history of the Ford Motor Company. Um, Henry Ford tried two times before with two different companies, and each time it was failed yeah. to start a car company until he started Ford, which was three years after the first attempt that he made to start a car company, doing the same thing. But it, that's just it. It's, it. Sometimes it takes you several attempts to get something that people like, and then it works. Before we go into our, our picks, I would like to go into the Sony story. Okay, yeah. Uh, Sony once again... Is having some sort of issues when it comes to what more issues from Sony when it comes to security. Sony's not having a good morning, uh, according <laughs> to this story. In addition to having recalled 1.6 million Sony Bravia TVs, which I know many people that are affected by this, that's a huge recall. 
Uh, it is forced temp to temporarily temporarily, temporarily lock, lock 93,000 93, customers. customers out of the PSN and Sony online entertainment accounts. You won't be surprised for the reason by hackers. Uh, so what, what's what? the story more with hackers. this? hackers. Do, do you know more about this? I don't know a whole much other than it's just like they still can't protect themselves against hackers. But they're saying the reason for this is because... Yeah, this is a very odd story in the sense that um, they said that some of the affected accounts, uh, there was activity on the accounts that were abnormal, that didn't look right to them. So they decided, all right, well, these 93,000 people to prevent uh, any more harm to them or to prevent anything else from becoming an issue, we're just going to lock these accounts out. Yeah, which um, I don't know. I don't know. You know, I, one thing that I was wondering is that didn't they say that everybody has to redo their passwords? Um, I don't remember. And do you remember that? That no. everybody needs to redo their passwords and it can't be like a simple password. Well, that's just good security, period. It, you always got to use a, a good, secure password. And if you're not, if you're using one, two, three, four, five, six, you're an idiot. Plain and simple. I'm sorry about it. If that's your password, you really need to use a better password. I don't think you should be calling me an idiot. <laughs> uh, I know your passwords, too. That's the funny thing. You know all my passwords, actually. And my <laughs> passwords are out of control. <laughs> How out of control are those passwords? Some of them are pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, I mean, in the sense that it's very <laughs> difficult to crack. Yeah. All right. So, why don't we do our picks? What do you think? You want to go sure. first? You want to go first this week? Uh, yeah, I can go first this week. Okay. I got a pretty nifty little program here that I've called. I've found it's called NetBurner. What it does is it burns disk over a network because nowadays you'll you'll find you know netbooks, ultra books. And sometimes even desktop and laptop computers now don't come with any sort of optical drive. Well, how are you supposed to burn CDs and DVDs and Blu-ray discs then? Other than getting an external hard drive, you pretty much can't. And, and a good reason why you might need to uh, burn a disc is what if you need a, a Windows repair CD for the computer that you just bought? You wouldn't be able to do that. But with this program called NetBurner, it's from Paragon, you can do that over the network with another computer that you have that does have an optical drive that you can burn DVDs with. Uh, it's Paragon Software. They just released version 2.0 of it. It's pretty cool. It works over the network. It, ha it consists of one install file, and you can install it on two computers. Mm -hmm. One will be the server. One will be the client. The client being um, the the uh, computer that you need that doesn't have the optical drive on it. The server is going to be the computer that you have that does have the optical drive on it. It's great. It's free, which is a really cool thing. All you have to do is uh, go through a simple registration form. They'll send you the download link and a product key. You just type it into the program. It's awesome. It's called NetBurner, and it's from Paragon Software. It's a cool pick, actually. Um, so I, I, um, I was actually forced to look into something like this, uh, the, the next pick I have. Uh, we all know that the camera on the, uh, the iPad 2 is an awful camera. I mean, it's just awful. It the is? Same, yeah, and the same goes for the iPhone, uh, the iPod Touch. The camera is not so good. Uh, even comparing it to the iPhone 4, uh, it's a lower quality camera. And I, and I really never understood why they didn't change the camera. Uh, but on the, on the iPad, it's just, it's, it's honestly, it's one of the worst cameras that I've ever used. So my pick, and, and I've been searching for ways to do more photo editing, because I, I do take pictures with this occasionally. And I do take a lot of pictures with my iPod Touch when I'm on the go. I'm not carrying another camera. If I'm walking around the neighborhood, I'm not really carrying another camera unless I'm doing stuff with my, cam with my Nikon in the park. But I did want something that's going to do very simple retouching with one button on this device. So I picked uh, Photoshop Express. Uh, it's in the App Store. It's in the, uh, the, the uh, Apple App Store. So let me just give you a little example here. So here is a picture of me, and it's an awful picture. Uh, if I, I don't know if the camera does it justice, but it's very pixelated. It's very noisy due to low light. Uh, the camera never does you justice. No, it does nothing for me. And obviously, I'm <laughs> drunk in this picture. So with this, you could have you have the option of uh, sketching, soft focus, sharpen, reduce noise. 
You could also do effects. You could add borders. You could change the uh, exposure, saturation, tint. So pretty much everything with this. One thing I really love is the, no the noise reduction. When you hit the noise reduction, it really cleans it up. It, I don't know if you could tell, but it looks totally different now. Let's see if you could. It'll focus. So let's go back. It's kind of cool. From that to that, uh, obviously, I think you could tell the noise is there. Uh, but it does a really good job, and it's it almost looks like it's photoshopped. Uh, it's not a great job that it's doing, but it is cleaning it up, and it's removing noise, uh, and it looks like a Photoshop job on a uh, really bad picture. Uh, it's called Photoshop Express, and I believe it's free right now in the uh, in the App Store. That's cool. Yeah, I really, I, I didn't think it would be that easy to use, but um, it's it's very easy to use, and it does a great job with it. Uh, you you have more options if you uh, play around with it some more, but that's one of the easiest functions I, I saw on that device, and I thought it was a pretty cool device. And I know a lot of people are sharing photos and playing around with photos on these devices, and uh, I thought it was a good pick. And that's my cool. pick of the week. Uh, Suncast, I want to thank you for joining me this week. I know we had some problems and yep. we started a little late. Hey, but, don't uh, forget, I got a plug I want to give yeah. everybody. So Suncast has a new website. Yeah, I launched a new website. That's non-GFQ. That's non-GFQ affiliated. Yes. Yes, it doesn't have anything to do with GFQ. Uh, I'm uh, very upset, Amadeus. actually. It's called Amadeus. So tell people about this. Amadeus is a music blog website that features uh, YouTube videos and just videos of artists in general in general, general, excuse me, uh, not well-known artists, uh, upcoming artists, new artists, that sort of thing, unsigned artists, uh, just a novice type of singer, anybody that's not even a professional, but they have a great voice, they're posting YouTube videos. That's the kind of thing that I'm into now is I love finding uh, cover songs on YouTube of people singing. Uh, recently, I just featured a video of uh, uh, Jason Derulo's song, It Girl, by this uh, uh group this duo and it's phenomenal it's actually better than the original i think uh just go to amadeus.com that's a-m-a-d-a-i-s.com that's my new website i love it great pick actually. what do you think of it do you I, like it i do like it actually and i made this a pick of the week so uh, i want to put it on the website i i wish you the best of luck with it i think it's a great idea and i think you're going to do great with it i like i hope everybody out there goes and checks it out and sends yeah. me videos for for spell the website again spell the website again for everybody a m a m a a d a i s it's like com. it's like mozart amadeus very nice very cool I, I i really think it's a great idea um and and more stuff is to come you did a great job nice and clean suncast nice and clean <laughs> thanks i want to uh let everybody know you can go to our website gfkeynetwork.com or you could go to our streaming site and watch us live we're on 24 hours a day seven news a week i apologize i wasn't on this week uh i think i was on only one day i, I came down with the flu and i was pretty sick uh, i didn't do a show yesterday I, I still have a bad headache but i'm feeling a lot better and uh, I'll be on till 11 o'clock tonight with the free-for-all. But I want to encourage everybody, go to our website, gfqnetwork.com. Also, go to gfqlive.tv. Interact with us. We have a great chat room there. Uh, Uber Geek is in there. One of our regulars. Uh, Suncast is in there. I'm in there. Kunal is in there, surprisingly. Spencer's in there. Uh, Tyson Brooks is in there. Uh, let's see. Hellstar is in there. Eric Andrews and, uh, and Phototypes. Phototypo is in there. And a bunch of other people. So I encourage everybody to go check it out. And we will see you next week on Tech News Weekly. Good night, everybody.